Please take a moment to pause the video and attempt the question on your own before moving forward. In this question, we have a straight wire that's carrying a current that happens to be placed in a magnetic field. And it turns out, of course, that there is indeed an equation that we can use to calculate the force that is being exerted on that wire by the magnetic field. So that magnetic force is going to equal the magnetic field strength multiplied by the current that's flowing through the wire, multiplied by the length of the wire, and then multiplied by the sine of the angle. Now we will see that the angle is between the current and the magnetic field. Perhaps the biggest challenge of this question is to accurately draw a picture that is based on the description given in the question. So that's our next step. Now to help us understand the scenario here, what we have is a dotted plane. It looks like a giant square essentially. And we've labeled the rightward direction as being north and then the opposite direction as being south. And if we choose those directions for north and south, hopefully it's reasonable to understand that this direction would be west and then this direction here would be east. Now the question describes a magnetic field that is pointing 75 degrees below the horizontal in that north-south plane. So we're going to attempt to draw that. So there it is. This is the magnetic field vector that's described in the question. It's typically labeled green and we've labeled it with the letter B for the magnetic field. The angle right here, of course, is 75 degrees. We've shown a little bit of a dotted line to kind of emphasize that the magnetic field line right here is sort of behind the plane so we wouldn't be able to actually see it and then it peaks out once it goes past the plane and shows its full vector glory here. And so our next step would be to draw in the wire. Now in part A it says that the current is directed horizontally toward the east. So we're going to go ahead and draw the wire projecting along what we have labeled the east direction. So here it is. We've colored it in red and we know that the current is flowing towards the east so we can even project a vector towards the east and label it with I for the current. Now the tricky thing is going to be able to come up with the angle between the magnetic field and the current. That is indeed the angle we need when plugging into this formula. Your eyes may play tricks on you here because it's going to turn out, we'll try to convince ourselves of this fact, that this angle right here is indeed 90 degrees. It may not look like 90 degrees, but let's try to explain that fact. One possible way of explaining this is to project the magnetic field along the northerly direction so you can see it hanging out over here. Now hopefully in that case you would see that the angle between the north and the east is indeed 90 degrees. Now what's going on here is that we're sort of swinging the magnetic field downward. And if we go all the way to this point right here, you again hopefully can see that the angle between this magnetic field line that I'm holding onto and the current is still 90 degrees. In fact, anywhere between this position and this position is going to be 90 degrees with reference to the east direction. You might want to pause the video and kind of use your imagination to convince yourself that no matter where I hold this green magnetic field line, it's always going to be forming a 90 degree angle with the easterly direction. And so that's why we can safely say that even when the magnetic field is in this position, its angle to the east is 90 degrees. So we are now ready to plug into the formula for magnetic field, current, length, and then the 90 degree angle. Now the sine of 90 degrees is 1, so this basically cancels out. And when you compute this, you should get approximately 9 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons as the correct answer for the magnitude of the force. And now we must try to come up with the direction of this force, and that turns out to be also quite challenging to visualize. So here is my best attempt at drawing this situation here. We're using the right-hand rule, and in that rule we point our four fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, our thumb points in the direction of the current, and then our palm pushes in the direction of the force. Indeed, we can label F here for the force. Now, we must keep in mind that even though it might not look like it in this drawing, the angle between the magnetic field and the force is always a 90 degree angle. So that's 90 degrees right there. We were told, again, that the angle between the magnetic field and the north direction was 75 degrees. So I'll try to squeeze that in right there. Well, indeed, that must mean that this angle right here, which is between the force and the horizon, must be 15 degrees. So we'll come over here and label that 15 degrees. And so for the direction of part A, we can say the following. 15 degrees above the horizontal in the northward direction. I realize that's a confusing phrase. 
Usually the questions aren't so difficult to visualize. Hopefully this picture provided some clarity and shed some light on the direction of this force. We can now move on to part B. And in this part of the question, now the current is directed vertically upward, so we can label a current vector right there. And to get the angle, which again is another challenge, we need the angle from the red current over to the magnetic field. And perhaps this one isn't as hard to see. We do know that from here down to here is 90 degrees, and then the angle sort of continues on for another 75 degrees. So the grand total for the angle between the current and the magnetic field would just be the two added together, so it would be 165 degrees, which we can plug into the formula. And we see the magnetic force is approximately 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons. So that's the correct magnitude. We need the direction as well. This attempt at a drawing is probably the best I can do to explain this one. This time our thumb would be pointing straight up because that's the direction of the current. Our four fingers would be projecting northward. Now I know they're not exactly in the north direction. They're actually dipped 75 degrees below the horizontal, but it's still overall in the northerly direction. And therefore our palm would be facing towards the west. And remember the palm is the direction of the force. So the correct answer for the direction to part B is to the west. And the magnitude was already noted. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own questions to the email address listed.